Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Day One Podcast. I'm Brett Nord. I'm Adam Daly. We have a special guest today, Adam. I know. This this was kind of elaborate to get set up, but we have a Zoom call live right now with yes. one of our users. We're stepping it up. We're actually got some video going on, just audio. And Martin, I would love everyone to meet. I interviewed Martin or had a discussion with him a few months ago and uh, quickly determined that we're going to need more time than just a 10-minute discussion with him. In fact, I thought it would bring him on to the podcast and let him tell more about the way he uses day one. So we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. Well, welcome, Martin. I'm happy to be here. Thank Honored you. to be the first one. That's yes, cool. Yes. Breaking breaking waves here. That's going to be awesome. Breaking waves. It's going to yes. be awesome. Yes. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Martin. Uh, so I'm proud Canadian, uh, north of the border from you guys. Nice. Uh, what do you want to know exactly? You want to know? And the town is Waterloo? Waterton. The town Water is Waterloo. Yeah. Waterloo. So we're about an hour and a half away from Toronto. Uh -huh. Excellent. Gravy on fries? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to talk about. <laughs> just, can we just dedicate okay. an episode on this? <laughs> Don't diss it, man. It's pretty no, good. No, I'm not. I'm, not. I'm just curious. The, you I'm have curious. to have the cheese on the fries, too. Ah. And, and for those of you who really want to go crazy, you can use mayonnaise on French fries. Interesting. You can. Well, In fact, one of the great joys of the world <laughs> is sweet potato French fries with Cajun mayo. Oh, you got to okay. try it. All right, yeah, I would eat that. You got to try Sold. it. Well, see, in Utah, we have we have a sauce that we call fry sauce, and it's known <laughs> by other names elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But Utahns are very uh, adamant that we invented this sauce, and it's silly ketchup and mayo mixed together. Oh, okay. We, it, it's our fry sauce. You go you go anywhere in Utah, and you can ask for fry sauce, and they'll know what you're talking about. <laughs> but 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 a similar thing. I would eat sweet potato fries with Cajun mayo. That sounds delicious. That sounds really good. But this is a, <laughs> this really is a, this isn't a food podcast. <laughs> no, no. But thanks, Martin, for that. We'll have to try that. Yeah, sounds great. Martin Reci starts recipes. Food journal as we yes. speak. Yes. Recipes from Martin. So here we are, episode nine. <laughs> yeah, um, th this has been so great. I think this is a nice uh, way for the community to get to know us get to know the team as we've interviewed members of the team and we're still going with that. We have a few more to do and uh, also get to know our users, how they use day one with the interviews that you've been doing with them. Sure. Uh, and then we do our best to talk about roadmap stuff and give you some tips and tutorials on how to best use day one. So that's what we want to do today. We want to talk about some updates then we'll get into talking with Martin about how he uses day one, some best practices and just talk about his experience. Uh, and then I have a little tip slash tutorial that I would like to give, and then we'll wrap it up. So that's where we'll start here. Uh, so let's talk about the big update, 3.0. And I'm happy to announce that it is in in an in internal beta. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the day one team right now has 3.0 on their devices, and we're testing it out like mad, making sure that it's up to snuff and ready to go for a public release. So big things that are in 3.0 that I want to talk about. One the new editor. Mm -hmm. Now I know that's kind of looming for some users, especially power users that use Markdown very heavily. And I've been trying to play with it and test it out and see what is supported in there. Um, what happens for the most part is any Markdown that you're putting in like asterisks for the bold italics and stuff like that gets converted into our editor. And so you won't see those asterisks anymore. The editor is more for, it's more of a what you see is what you get type editor. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to help out a lot of our users. Since we've gone to uh, freemium, we've added a lot more users that aren't necessarily power users or markdown users. And so right. we wanted to make it more user friendly. And that's why a big push for this new editor is coming. And there was, some, some, excuse me, there was some concern on the Facebook group yeah. page about that. Yeah. And they heard Markdown was going to be changed. They thought yeah. it was gone forever. So I'm glad you clarified that. Uh, and, and, and for the most part, it's, it's supported. I was playing with some tables right. last night. Uh, I've got some feedback for the team for that. But like anything that you have in day one already should not be lost necessarily with the change. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll, we'll, we'll get more into that as we keep testing it. If you're interested in trying the beta, if you're a Markdown user sure. and you want to try out the beta, um, will you just send us an email at beta at day one app .com and we'll see what we can do. I can't promise everybody will be added on, but we, we'd like, I mean, I think that would sure. be helpful. So yeah. uh, I'll, I'll let Spencer know he's our beta manager and, and just uh, let him know you might get some emails soon, but I think that would might be helpful. Uh, the other how about, one. How about you, Martin? Do you use uh, Markdown? 
in your head? Yeah, I'm heavy into Markdown. Okay. So that's that's the way I do things. Yeah. So yeah, I, I have to admit to a little trepidation too, but I'm I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Good. Nice. Like I said, I, we want the best for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Markdown was a great editor, and but it's not it's not as I mean th we had a number of users that weren't familiar with it, and so they got frustrated with why are why are there asterisks in my entry, etc. But uh, I think I think this is going to be a good happy medium. I want to tell you more, but I just I'm I'm yeah. playing with it still. Sure. So TBD. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. We're, we're, uh, I'll have more information as I keep playing with it. But so far, it's looking great. I can do asterisk, I can do markdown, and it just converts over to the new editor and it looks great. Awesome. Uh, Martin, stay tuned. I'll show you a little bit before we leave. Sound good? All right. Sounds great. Um, the other big one is dark mode for iOS. I think m dark mode for Mac is waiting on Mojave because it's going to have some native dark mode support in there. So I, it's going to come to iOS first in version 3.0, and it looks great, you guys. Oh, man. There's two different settings right now where you can have it set to a scheduled dark mode where it will turn on at sunset, turn off at sunrise, mm. and I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also manually set those controls if you want or just do always dark. Mm -hmm. That's how I have my Twitter feed all the time, just yes, dark mode. Got to have dark mode. Yes. And um, your, your tweets reflect that too, <laughs> the tone. <laughs> the, dark, the dark side. Right. Uh, and then another huge drop for uh, 3.0 is our audio recording, which mm. is coming. And uh, it's great. There is, I believe, a 30-minute time limit right now of how long you can record. Um, I know the team is working on transcription stuff, but that may not be available in the first iteration. Mm -hmm. Transcription has been interesting just kind of as, a, as an observer mm -hmm. watching the team go through what you know what needs to be done there's different services that we can use Google is one of the best but they charge for it depending on the length of your stuff right. so unless we all want to be paying a lot more pre for day one premium uh, we're looking at other options what's out there what can we get that is going to be cost friendly for us for users etc so um, yeah can I say one thing about audio yeah. so we don't talk about the competing products very much but no. I have been looking at what competitors are doing and I will say I think we're doing it really well. Yeah. I'm excited the way we've implemented it, where it's easy to use and yet super clean and user friendly, and I think people are going to be really happy with I it. Agree. I agree. Worth the wait. Well, and, and you know, just being able to use audio for different things, like recording an interview with your grandma or something, and having that in your day one journal. Sure. What a cool thing to have mm -hmm. as part of capturing life, you know, and capturing right. those memories that you will have precious, you know, precious memories like. I wish I wish I would have known my maternal grandparents, but they passed away before I was born. And mm -hmm. if I could like go back in time and like help them not die, and then sure, sure. <laughs> and then just sit down with them and just listen to them, I think that would be fascinating. Mm -hmm. Just to hear their life story yes. and get to know them. But right, yeah. Uh, anyway, so 3.0 is in internal beta right now. The next step after that is external beta, where we'll get it out to all of our external beta testers to get playing with it, to get trying it out give us feedback about things they've noticed and uh after that is public release so this is you know this is the closest we've ever been if i can use a an apple tactic <laughs> this is the best iphone ever yes until we release the new until we one. release the next one right now uh but yeah we're we're closer than ever on 3.0 and it's looking really good so far you guys i'm very excited about it so yeah that's what i've got for 3.0 good Thanks. Thank oh, you very much. oh, one. I should say one more thing about sync. We talked to uh, Murphy and Haas last Haas. time. Yep. And still going forward at looking at alternatives to our current managed sync. Um, and just and just as a correction, like they're not wrong. Murphy and Haas are the only two web server guys in house, but we also have a couple of contractors that work with us. So I want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, and then we also have a um, uh, operations couple of part-time operations guys that help us out as well to make sure that sync is online that everything's working uh, and we do our best to do that um, sometimes sync does go down and the great thing is day one can still be used offline which I think is mm -hmm. you know important mm -hmm. and uh, but if you go and look at like our stats for how uh, how often sync is up versus down we have over 99 percent uptime it's really good mm -hmm. uh, there are those issues and that's what we're trying to work to correct and, and get through those. So uh, Haas and, and Murphy are still working through those, looking at another sync service uh, that will be better managed and 
you know, give them time to work on stuff that they want to work on. So awesome. coming soon. Yeah. We're excited about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we talk about some uh, some day one uses? Yeah, I'm excited. Great, me too. As I mentioned in the intro, uh, I love talking to Martin because, well, a lot of reasons, but one, he was the first and only one to refer to his usage as being a diarist. Is that right, Martin? <laughs> diarist. 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 There we go. Diarist. Yeah, care, careful yeah. with that one. Yeah. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> you, you, you know, you got this whole diary, diaryist and calendarly thing. Yeah, yes. yeah. Calend- tongue twisters. Calendly. They're all tongue twisters. It's terrible. It is. It is. Yeah. But no, I was impressed that you t- more methodical than a lot of folks I talked to. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, I journal or I write. But you really consider yourself because you do photography too, and you you know you have more of a methodical approach to the way you journal. So you want to talk about your routine routine a little bit with us? So the routine isn't uh, that much different from what I've heard other people say. Uh, my journal entries basically start with a photograph. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly easy to start things that way. I've always got my iPhone with me. There's just there's no reason to not do it this way. Yeah. So as I go through my day, usually I'll find something that's interesting or something that catches my eye or something that I thought about. And at that moment, I'll take a picture and it frames the entry for the day. Now, usually I don't do anything more than take the picture. I mean, when you take the picture, lots of things happen anyway. Uh, You know, geolocation happens, weather happens, step counts happen. If you're listening to something, all of this just happens, which is a heck of a lot before you even get to the point where you're writing. So that's kind of cool. But I kind of put it away at that point and I'll go through my day. And if there's another thing, well, cool. You know, I just add another picture. Um, But I wind up doing most of my writing in the evening. So I'll use it as a way to wrap up my day. So it's kind of a a nice way to conclude a day. You know, you you sit there and you look through what happened that day and the pictures are their own reminders. So it's, it's cool. So you go through the day, you write about that and then you get to the end of it and you've kind of done your, uh, I don't know your purge. I don't think I think purge yeah, is no, the right idea. Maybe no, it I think is. That's, I think that's no, the kind of word. day you've had. I guess. Yeah. I mean, if it was a bad day, it's a purge. <laughs> but if it was a good day. It's just like a nice exposition on your day, right? Yes. So, and then you're done with it, and that's cool. You just you move on, and I find that that's a great way to end a day. So, mm-hmm. well, and I, I wind think, up doing this daily. Yeah. No, I think that's important too. For me, also, I do the same thing. I'm a photo heavy journaler. I start with the photo. Later on, I'll I'll write about it and add add context. But I feel like I'm not, but, but I feel like it helps me live in the moment too, so that I'm not mm-hmm. missing it. Because if you've been to a concert recently, you see everybody just holding up their phones, recording a concert, and it's not going to be great quality. Not you don't have professional equipment, sure. regardless of how nice your phone camera or whatever may be, it's not going to be as the same. Take a few pictures and then be in the moment. Yes. And I feel like that kind of style of journal writing, where you take a few pictures, put it away and then go on with wherever you are, mm-hmm. then come back and reflect on it. I think that's, that's a way to stay in the moment. And I think that's important that we, mm-hmm. that we do that, that, you know, take some time to do that. Yes. I remember back in way the early, go. sorry, go ahead, Martin. I, I was just thinking yeah. it's a way better way to go. I mean, yeah, if you yeah. think about it, I, I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I've, I've been that guy, you know, the guy that's standing there <laughs> recording the concert. Right. Yep. <laughs> but I find that, I never watch that footage anymore. Yep, it's sure. ridiculous. It's like what I really do is I tell people about it. Yes. And if I want to tell people about mm. it, the best way to do that is to just grab an image so that you've got the story and then you can tell the story because yeah. no one's ever going to sit down and watch 15 minutes of people screaming. I, you know, yeah, it's just, of your it's iPhone not video. Happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Off your iPhone video. So Martin, you were happen. that guy that was holding, even back in the flip phone days, you were the one doing <laughs> crappy yeah. recording. And a Motorola Razor, it was tremendous quality. One, you know, 0. 0.1 megapixels. <laughs> chick, 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 chick. And it's I, a little I, postage stamp. You put it on a retina screen yeah. and you can kind of see it. <laughs> and I was the guy next to you in the concert whispering in your ear, you'll never watch, you won't be happy with this footage. You'll never watch it again. <laughs> What? I promise. You're a wise man, Brett. Yeah. You see into the future. <laughs> YouTube has better footage of somebody recording this concert. So he is the guru. You are no, the you're you're no, the life guru, Brett. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. That's why I need it. I get all my life advice from Brett now. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> Scary. You're Brett. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thanks, Martin. And the other thing I love, which I want you to talk about, is the names of your journals and particularly your gardening journal. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, currently I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of holding on to one, two, three. I've got six journals at the moment Mm. and I don't know where that fits in the grand scheme of how many journals people have, but um, I find that 
six is working so far, although I need a seventh one now. Apparently, I, I'm doing something else in, in, on the side, uh, but it'll be its own journal. But right now, what I've got is the main journal, and I think everybody started that way. At least, sure. at least the old guard started that way, because when you only had one journal, you yep. had a journal, and <laughs> yep. you called it journal, right? right? So all that stuff is kind of like a, a throwover. So the main journal has the most entries. And then I had a health journal, which went on for a number of years. Um, but I found that that's kind of, it's, it's, I used to write daily, but now it's just like, well, if something happens just so that I can reference back at it. So it's mm -hmm. kind of, uh, fallen by the wayside a little bit. Um, I've got a, a morning report journal. That's what I call it. And I didn't know what else to call it. It's just sometimes I get, uh, something will happen first thing in the day. And that kind of goes there. So under morning report, I log, you know, power failures that happen in the house overnight. Or if there is a particular change in the season that I've noted that I want to go back to later. Um, or maybe I saw something on my bike ride that morning. That was really cool. So it kind of it kind of stands separate. Um, at least it makes sense in my mind. I don't know. Yeah. But um, <laughs> <laughs> moving on, I have a dream log. Oh, nice. Uh, that's that's kind of uh, an interesting one. I. I'll, what I'll do is if I remember a dream that I've had in the morning, I'll point form it because I generally, I don't have time to write all of this stuff out in the morning. Yeah. But then if I have time during the day, I'll, I'll fill in those blanks. And it's, it's a very weird and interesting journal to have because it shows up. Like, this is not something that happens every morning for me, but the ones that do, it shows up on the on this day as you go forward. Yeah. And I'm thinking, so two years ago you had this dream, and I have no memory of this, like none. I'm like, what, did I, really? <laughs> you know, sure. it's this kind of strange window into my psyche that I've provided for myself from the past that I'm now enjoying. It's a very strange thing. Mm. So anyway, I, I just do it for the sake of wow, this is kind of interesting and what was i thinking at that point maybe like what what caused that i don't know yeah anyway uh moving along i've got a garden journal mm. um which is uh, my wife and i are avid gardeners we have a, a large garden in the backyard and uh, we track which plants come up at what time of year um you know and what we've planted and where because you've got to <laughs> i mean it's not a crop rotation per se but plants grow better if you plant them in different places throughout as the seasons go on yeah uh so we keep track of these things which is cool and it allows you to post pictures so you can yep. see like how did this plant do how did that do oh, so it's cool. a really really cool oh. way to keep track of that kind of thing mm -hmm. and then finally I, I don't think i announced it to you brett the last time but we're expecting so oh, i am congrats. i've got a kid on the way yeah so, <laughs> first kid yeah congratulations Thank you so very much. Oh, that's oh, awesome. Life so, changing. I mean, the first thing I did when I found that out is like, well, I got to create a journal. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to we're going to track this, right? I yeah. mean, I'm I've I've never been one to uh to do social media in such a way that I share everything like uh, that what do they call it? They call it a uh, um Amen. sharing. Oh, yep, yep. <laughs> the idea of sharing every last moment that you possibly have, right? You know, like here's baby's first selfie and it's like the ultrasound. No, uh, I'm yeah. not the guy that does that. But I am the guy that likes to know that stuff. So yeah. I put that stuff yes. in to the to the journal that I've created for the kid. Yep. And I kind of hope that this will evolve as we go along, right? It'll it'll start in this way, but it will turn into other things that I can't even imagine yet. And that's pretty much where I've that's how I've structured it today. And of course it's 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 ever evolving you yeah. know it's a very organic process whatever happens happens i've had journals that i've just gotten rid of i used to have a gratitude journal i i kind of got rid of it because it was it, it got for me it didn't work i understand the concept of uh sure. gratitude journals yeah, and sure. keeping them and it totally makes sense to me but i found out that after five months or so i was having trouble coming up with anything that wasn't repetitive yeah. right so it, it had devolved yeah. into the ridiculous it's like i'm not on yeah. fire at the moment you know I'm, <laughs> you know, like it just it became it became silly so i kind of got rid of it right and yeah. i thought all right this can just become a part of the regular journal mm. you know as you go through it kind of happens for me anyway like if i'm talking about the photo of the day it's typically it's like hey this is this is happening today and isn't that a cool thing Right. Yeah, it's more organic so it, the way you're growing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Instead of yeah. forced. So that's where I'm sitting today. Nice. Well, I just pulled up the Facebook page just to see uh, because of that poll. I'm, I'm going to call the person out. It looks like Joao put it up there. How many journals do you have? Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like most of the responses were three or more. And then several people, as they commented and put what journals they had, it seems seven's kind of an average. 
So oh, cool. That mm. makes sense. Uh, it's nice to be normal. Yeah. <laughs> Alistair it has off and I swear. <laughs> In one way, you're average, Martin. Yeah. Just one. <laughs> um, some have more, some have less, uh, but... You know that seems seems about right. Seven, I think that's. Mm -hmm. I, I have well, no, I have eleven, but I have like test journals too, so I can't. Mm -hmm. I guess I can't count those. Mm -hmm. um, but the baby one, I think that is a really cool idea, mm -hmm. and I've started doing that as well with a journal for each of my kids. And it, this isn't necessarily. You don't have to do this, but just a call out something that I heard I thought was cool was a parent would use it to talk to their child before they could understand. You know, yeah, and, and make it like they're addressing the child. So later on, when they print it out or somehow give it to that person, that child, they'll have this conversation or this kind of viewpoint of their parent as they were growing up. That's and cool. I think that's a really cool idea. Mm -hmm. So well, I, one of the people that I'm you had on earlier, what, uh, I think it was uh, Andrea from DC. She mm, had yeah. like the best suggestions for for keeping kids journals. Yes. I was sitting there going, I, I'm in awe. It's like I this is what I want to do. I want to sit there with you know my future daughter and say hey what's on your mind today yeah let's write it down right yeah. and then yeah. let's talk about it if, if it's important to her right yeah. and that's the sort of thing that you can come back to it's really cool i mean i didn't start journaling until i was 13 so there's a wow. decade missing yeah and i'm like i want that time yeah. <laughs> i want yeah. that time we should have andrea and her daughter on no it, it'll be ever more important totally that'll be totally. fun it'll be ever more important as mm. you know as as we become more and more public uh, just in general, I think as a, as a, as a humanity, <laughs> um, having private moments and, and those, those intimate moments where you can just have a conversation with a child to have them express their feelings in a real world environment is, is just, is very important. I think I'm, I'm a proponent of that. Yes. Back to journaling or gardening. And I'm not a gardener. Yes. I buy my groceries at the produce store. They do the gardening. So do we, me. believe me. Do you? Okay. Gardening is more a labor of, labor of love. You can, you know, if you want to make tomato sauce, you're not going anywhere with your backyard garden, I promise. You. <laughs> yeah. We actually had a user who's a great author, a friend, not a close friend, but a friend I've corresponded a few times with email, uh, uh, Pat, Patrick Roan. He's written some books. He's also a fellow Mac consultant. That's what I used to do full time, and now it's uh, what he does still, I think. Anyway, great suggestion he he sent in when he uses day one as a sunlight pattern journal. Oh, let me explain. For my vegetable garden, I wanted a way to take and catalog pictures of the sunlight patterns and coverage every hour over the course of a day to get an idea of where to best plant things. Interesting. I also wanted to do this on different days throughout the spring and summer to get an idea of any changes. Day one proved perfect for this, as it has not not only allowed me to catalog each picture with the date and time, but also the temperature. I now have a record I can refer to over and over again throughout the season. Cool. Okay. That is neat. Great idea. <laughs> Unrelated, Thanks, Patrick. But, but to things that grow. I actually did a, I have a journal entry for the sprinkler zones at my house because they're, ah. kind of, they're kind of weird. Like they don't sure. go in order sure. in my house, but I wanted to know, you know, okay, if I'm going to change the time on zone one, where is zone one or whatever? Mm. Like, okay, this part is getting dry. How can I increase the time on that? So I, yeah. I've got a journal entry to tell me where that is, but... Like it. I guess it's kind of similar. I'm growing sure. grass. Sure. Sure. I guess. As opposed to smoking it. So, uh, how about your favorite entry? <laughs> favorite entry. spends a lot of yeah. time in the garden these days. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were saying, Brad. Yeah, favorite entry. <laughs> I know favorite... you've got, you've told me. So, share with, the, with the, all of us. Your favorite a, a entry. favorite entry? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Um, there's so many. I'm not sure. Like you have to understand, I have well over four thousand entries. I yeah. <laughs> wow! Um, it's very hard to pick a favorite. Uh, I think my favorite entries, though, are the ones where I kind of get out of my comfort zone. Most of my entries mm. are just, you know, in and around the house. Sure. I, let's face it; people live their lives. You know, yep. things happen. You you go through your life, and most of the time, you're kind of within five kilometers of where you woke up that morning, and you know, you, this is what you're doing, right? Right. Or you're taking a picture of Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Adam's doing it right now. <laughs> which could happen. Which could do, yeah. uh, No, but my favorite entries are kind of cool. The ones that, like if we go on a road trip or something and we're away from where we usually are, yeah. it's, it's fun to do that because you can get pictures of places that you don't normally see. And it's fun because you're recording something that you don't normally do. Mm -hmm. So lots of those entries are the ones that kind of come back that, on the on this day if i find an entry where we've gone someplace or we've done something with people that we don't see every day those are the ones that i really want to share like i've 
it's been, you know, in a lot of ways, it's funny because I'll get up in the morning and, you know, day one will hand me my on this day. And every now and again, I'll see people that I haven't seen in a month or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll get on iMessage and I'm like, Hey, you know what? It's been a while. I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, that's nice. How are you doing? You know, like, and it's, it's like this trigger. Sometimes I even share the photo. It's like, Hey, remember this? We were doing this last year at this time. Do you believe that? And they're like, seriously, that's only been a year. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's crazy how these things kind of move. So the ones that I really love are the ones that are a little unusual that kind of stand out a little bit more. That's now awesome. that I'm thinking about that, I should probably favorite those entries. I never do that. Yeah. I should put like a star on those or something. I should yeah. do that. No, yeah, I started yeah. I started using tags more frequently than I did before. I've, I know I've admitted on this show that I don't use tags. Mm-hmm. And I've started to use them as I thought about, uh, and this is, kind of, this is just personal to me, but I, I have really enjoyed going to soccer games recently. And I thought I would love to just have a printed book of all the times I went to the soccer match. Mm. How am I going to do that? Oh, tags, duh. Sure. Like, that makes sense. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, I need to go back. And what I did was filter by the location uh, and use the multi-select tool and then tagged all of those entries as, you know, soccer, RSL is what we call our club here. And uh, now I can go back and do a printed book sometime of just those entries. And I think that'll be a neat experience for me. Awesome. But, no, I love, I love that idea. And with people, too. Again, I've made this argument several times just about how sometimes by being more connected online, we become less connected with people in the real world. But your your example is perfect in how you can stay grounded in the real world by communicating them, you know, by having those memories. I think that's really neat. Yeah, it's very cool. And I love that you said the some of your favorites are the ones that you kind of get out of your head a little bit and talk more about you know, think about your thoughts and uh, work through ideas. Um, remember we've talked about Sean Blanc on the, the show before yep. with his program and sweet setup and a couple of things he said, I loved in that program. In fact, he's, he said it on his website when he reviewed day one, it talks about how journaling is for today as much as it is for tomorrow. For me, journaling is about retrospection and about capturing memories. It's about working through my current issue today as much as it is about leaving a breadcrumb trail of advice for my future self. I like that. It's really great. And he says, journaling has kept him from repeating the same mistake twice. It's helped me find courage during hard times, hard seasons of life, because I realize I've been through something similar already. And I can read about how I handled that past situation and how I worked it out. That's what I need to do. Journal about my mistakes so I can avoid. (laughs) Leave those breadcrumbs. Yes. That's the key. Yes. That's the key. That's it. Cool. Great. Martin, anything? Yeah. I know Martin's got a tip for us. All right. Martin, do you have a. You're still with a, us? A tip. Yeah. Yes, I'm still with you. Yeah, I'm yeah. still here. So did you? Uh, uh, so the one tip that was interesting that I mentioned earlier was uh, we talked about the gardening journal. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's And I also mentioned that when you take a photograph, you've got uh, a lot of metadata that comes with that. And among the things that come down the pike are the uh, weather information. So for gardeners like myself, it's very cool to go back and see what the temperature was or what the weather was during that time. We've been... Up, up here in Canada, we've been saying, wow, this is like a much hotter year than we remember. And oftentimes, like in in, uh, in March, we're looking outside and the snow's falling and we're like, really? <laughs> and so, you know, like, so I look back and I'm saying to myself, did winter really go on this long last yeah. year? And in fact, yes, it did. It just seems like it didn't. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's neat that you can leverage the metadata that you get for free. Mm. So keep an eye on that. It's worth more than a lot of people... Can, is, I think it's worth more than people normally realize. Yes. You know, it's, it's there, but you don't, you kind of gloss over it, mm-hmm. but it's worth it in some cases to really look at that stuff because it's, it's handy to have. I like that. That's great. How about a tip for those of us, us meaning myself included very much, that I can't seem to make this stick every day? What was it for you that really made it something that you can consistently journal? Wow, it's, it's funny that you mentioned this. Okay, so for me personally, when I started with uh, day one, I did use the reminder feature. Mm-hmm. Like it, it popped up at 10 p.m. every night and I said, hey, how about you write in your journal? Uh, that worked for me for about a month and then I took it off because I found that I was doing it anyway. And I think that, I've, mm. I've been thinking about this, I think that maybe it breaks down into three kinds of people. There are people who are natural diarists who will write no matter what. And then there are people who just won't no matter what. Mm -hmm. And then there's people in the middle. And those people in the middle are the interesting ones. I think they benefit from things like uh, reminders because 
there are so many people, like when you think about it, so many people on Twitter or Facebook who actually want to record their thoughts, who actually want to put things down to remember them. And these are the people that can be kind of drawn in more to write more when they're, you know, like when they maybe otherwise wouldn't have thought so. A lot of people think, hey, Facebook, I've got to share something. Okay. But (laughs) if you do it in something like day one, you're sharing it with you. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's a different, that's a shift, yeah, but it's that. the same idea. You're still writing stuff down. Mm-hmm. So it's great to be able to be reminded to say, Hey, look, take this time for yourself, do some writing that you might've otherwise said to the world, but do it without curating it. Do it without any kind of filter. Yes. Just do it because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that it's a good thing to do. And so honestly, the best thing, that reminder thing is, is, it's it's right on awesome mm-hmm. because it'll help everybody who's in that middle range to kind of remember to do this. Yeah. Yes. And eventually if you form the habit, great, you can turn it off. But I mean, hey, <laughs> if it's if it helps you, go for it, right? Yep. Keep it on. Well, yeah. and and to that point, thank you for that. There are three at least three different reminder types in day 1 that you can use. There's the daily prompt where it will just pop up uh, at a time that you select, it's kind of a yep. random time, and it will just say, "What are you doing right now?" It'll have a, kind of a general prompt. It's time to journal or whatever. Sure. Uh, there's the location history prompt. So after a certain number of visits or at a certain time, you'll get a, a, a notification that says, "You've been to X number of locations. Why don't you write about them or one of them or whatever?" Uh, and then there is the on this day notification, which I, I is again my favorite feature of day one to go mm-hmm. back and revisit, which then prompts me to go, oh yeah, I need to write in my journal again. Mm -hmm. And then finally, there is the uh, custom reminder that you can add yourself with a custom prompt, uh, a template, you know, however often you want it to repeat, et cetera. So there's, there's several different reminder options that you can use in day one to help you keep that habit. That's right. And convenient. In fact, Martin, don't you use an Apple watch? Yeah, I do. With your day one? Uh, I, you know what, you pointed out that you can start entries on an Apple watch and it's, it's handy to do that. But I find that because most of my entries start as photographs, I still use the phone more than the watch. Yes. Yeah. I I actually use it a few times recently. I hadn't very much before. I love having it on there just because it Mm -hmm. makes me proud to, you know, work. That's, I work for that company, you know? Um, (laughs) but the other day I had this idea pop in my head. I think it was a joke about something and I wanted to remember to tell it to my friend, I just tapped on that, did a little dictation and it was saved. And so I can remember it later. But anyway, uh, I found it super helpful on a vacation I took not too long ago where it was kind of a trigger as I leave the restaurant, I would record about the place I ate, what I ate, you know, waiting for Uber, whatever is a good time to just transcribe. Just quick, quick little note. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Martin, for those, that, those, uh, thoughts. Really been a pleasure. Awesome. Yeah. It's been fun, fun, fun. (laughs) <laughs> now, I just have one tip also that I wanted to mention because it came up on Facebook, if that's okay. Yes. Um, is the use of 3D Touch slash Force Touch on iOS. So if your device supports 3D Touch, there's a couple of different options that you can do in day one uh, that I think you know it may not be as obvious unless you're actually pushing hard on the icon. So just from the beginning, if you uh, do 3D Touch on the icon on your home screen... There are some quick menu options to add an entry, start an entry with a photo, etc. So great way to jump right in without having to open the full app. And I mean, it'll still open the full app, but it's just a shortcut to mm-hmm. get right where you want to be. Then there's also a force touch on different areas in day one. So you can do a force touch on an entry in the timeline to mm-hmm. do a little preview of it without opening it all the way up. Mm-hmm. Or the same thing in the calendar view. You can force touch on a date to see entries on that date and kind of pop in there real quick. Mm-hmm. So... Check out 3D Touch slash Force Touch. I, I'm not sure what the difference is. You, you, you'd have to tell yeah. me. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> you don't know? Come on, you're the Apple Dude. guy. Yeah. Anyway, but if you press hard or long press on some of the things in day one, there's great access to uh, I just think you shortcuts. say Force Quit in Canada. For- and, force know. Touch? Force Touch uh, yeah. in U.S. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll look it up. I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. Don't. I've never given it this much thought. Seriously. <laughs> Just touch it. <laughs> Press hard, please. <laughs> That's right. Press hard. Yeah. Um, and then I, we also wanted to give a shout out to the community. It is growing. 630 Facebook. members yes. on the Facebook community. Join in. Um, that is like the only reason I have a Facebook account is to hang out, literally, and, that's hang out true. in there. Yes. <laughs> no, that is literally yeah, true. Yeah. I have no friends and I'm okay with that. 
I just want to get in this group. But it has been great to have you guys, and this is the entire purpose of the Facebook community page, is for the users to communicate with each other on best practices, how they're using the app. Uh, Every Mm -hmm. once in a while, myself, Brett, Ryan, uh, Cameron has jumped in. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just a comment. Murphy has even commented a few times, I think. Um, Just to talk about use of day one. If you're looking for support, you can always go to customer support. That's not really what the community page is for. So go to, you know, Day one dot day one app dot com slash contact if you need to get in contact with us mm-hmm. or the help guides at help dot day one app dot com. But the, the way you guys have been communicating on the Facebook page has been amazing. Yeah, it's uh, been fun to watch. Michelle and Matt and Mike, another yes, call out to them of just you. managing and contributing, making sure everyone gets answers, um, inspiring ideas and answering questions. So yeah. thank you. The questions that, that our users pose on these uh, on these posts are just fantastic. And yeah. I love the discussion that goes back and forth and so I hope you guys are getting a lot out of it. Um, well, I know I am just by reading yeah. your posts. It's it's helped me kind of pick up, pick myself up. I work for day one, and sometimes I need those little you know pushes, those little nudges, yes. and those have been extremely helpful. And I know that they've been helpful for other people too. In fact, the one on the how many journals do you use in day one poll that Joao did, um, the very last comment from Ken, he's like, I'm glad this topic was raised because I've known about multiple journals, but I've never set up a second one. And now that I've seen how people use them, I'm going to start doing another journal. Mm, and I thought awesome. that, that's, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. it's for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So keep, keep that yeah. up you guys. Thank you so much uh, for participating you guys and girls and everyone in, else in between. Um, thank you for being a part of that. Yeah. The other fun last thing I'll mention also, I've loved a few users have shared their first entry. Yeah. The photograph. In fact, I'm looking at Vicki Snyder Clark's and uh, I love that she started that thread. So carry on. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. Anyway, thank you uh, for tuning in today and thank you so much, Martin, for joining us on the show today. Ooh. It's been great. Um, it's been an honor. We, we're looking forward to 3.0 release coming soon, so stay tuned. And uh, the, the team is all hands on deck for that, so uh, it, it's coming. And, if again, if you have any needs, go ahead and go to help.day1app.com for support. And if you have questions or comments that you want to submit to us, Brett and I here, go to or send an email to podcast at day1app.com. That's right. Sound good? And there's still the Calendly. Calendly. Calendly Calendly.com. Dot com slash day one app. That's right. You can schedule some time with Brett. Um, And again, I think this worked out great. I think we're going to do this more times with more users. So Martin paved the way, and uh, I think it worked out really great today. So Yeah. Thanks, everyone. See you in two weeks. Or listen. Yeah. (laughs) We always say see you. It's just. Talk to you again in two weeks. Have a good one. 